everyone. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting direct from San Jose, California at AOPA Expo 2008. We're with Mike Glover of uh, Avidine Corporation. We're going to talk about the new FMS 900W. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the displays here and some of the fe uh, features and functionality. Uh, Mike, uh, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Let's take a quick look uh, at, at the new 900W. Great. Okay. Thanks. Okay, Paul, so one of the key features we'll talk about is the, the vectors mode that Avidyne has. But before we do that, let's talk quickly about the display on the primary flight display. Again, you have Avidyne's simple user interface and display uh, technology that's been the history of the company. We have the airspeed tape, the primary flight information, the altitude tape, and the vertical speed tape. You'll notice that down below we have uh, an FMS flight plan route map showing, and basically the vectors mode allows us to drive the heading bug input to deviate left or right of the flight plan leg and then uh, re-engage re or, or recalculate the intercept angle back to the flight plan leg. One of the other interesting features that, uh, that you wanted to see today was how to add a, an instrument approach to the flight plan leg. So what we have on the, uh, the secondary integrated flight display is a split screen showing the map on the left hand side and the flight plan legs on the right hand side. And if we go in to the arrival airport, which is LAX, and I select the approach window, I can quickly select the ILS I want to fly. In this example, we we'll use ILS to 7 left with vectors to that approach. And you can see very quickly it builds in, and it shows the bracket showing my ILS to 7 left, as well as the brake to get me to the missed approach uh, position on the flight plan as well. Building from the page and tab uh, format that we were just discussing. Um, let's take a let's take a look into what we can do with checklists as well, because Avidine offers the capability of having checklists with the FMS 900W, and I can work through the checklist. You can see as we're going through, you can select the actual part of the checklist I want, checking them off and turning them green as we go through. At the completion of the checklist, checklist completed comes up, and then uh, I can go to either reset it or check all or go back to my checklist functions within the within the capability. Another valuable feature of the FMS 900W is the capability with the FMS dedicated control panel to be able to select nav and comm frequencies as well as other FMS related flight plan and uh, transponders and to be able to go direct and to control many of the functions of the system. Let's zero in on, on the frequencies page on one of the displays where you can see the frequencies that are, are selected for LAX airport and we're going we're gonna to zero in on um, 120.950, which is the tower frequency for Northern California, and you'll notice a nice comm window underneath the primary flight instrumentation that uh, when I select the frequency will tune and tell me that I'm on NorCal approach control 120.950. So when a pilot's flying the airplane, they always know the controlling agency through our communication system of who they're talking with. Okay, Mike, thanks very much for the demonstration. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. We've been talking to Mike uh, Glover at AOPA Expo here in San Jose, California. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. Thanks for watching.